Welcome back. You're watching Big Deal and we are in discussion with the top team of Bain Capital. Uh, now, Pawan, we were talking about uh, the India approach and you spoke about the themes. A very big exit has been made after six years in a large bank, Axis Bank. How has that particular experience been? And in terms of returns, how do you see that? Will that also encourage you for more bank uh, investments? Sure. No, it's been, uh, it's been an incredible journey uh, in partnership with Amitabh and the team and the board. Uh, you know, when we invested in Axis um, several years ago at the time, it was just coming out of a lot of the infrastructure lending related challenges. Uh, it was a bank that I think at the time had, you know, 5% ROE, gross NPAs north of 5%. Uh, and if you look at the last quarter, uh, they had some of the best numbers on the street, right? 19% ROE, 23% growth, gross NPA is at under 1%. Yeah. Uh, so it's been an incredible transformation. And I think we've been really lucky and, and to be able to partner with that team and support them through that journey. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the stock price is up more than 2x from where we invested. Yes. So um, it's been a great partnership. We're really happy and proud of, I think, what we've been able to do um, with the team there at Axis. And, and I think it also has given us a great you know, insight and view into the broader economy and financial services yes. that we hope we'll leverage into more investments in that space. But financial services is something that you have been focused on, like 361, a more recent investment of yours. What are those uh, potentials and propellers that you see in the space and the company? Yeah, no, 361 is another great example. Uh, you know, Karan and Yatin have built a great business. Um, it's really a play on wealth creation in India, right? Mm -hmm. And as, as that wealth looks for professional management and investments into more alternates, um, and 361 is the market leader in that space. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just as a statistic, AIFs, which are alternates, one of the areas they're a leader in, mm -hmm. uh, has grown more than 3x in the last five years. Uh, and I think they've been one of the pioneers and very innovative, um, um, you know, players in that space. And so, you know, we think they're really well positioned and we're excited about that journey. But to your question more broadly, if you look at financial services, you know, they're in a bucket that we call more fee driven mm -hmm. businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and we like that space a lot, whether it's across asset management, wealth management, um, we think insurance could be uh, interesting, especially yeah. as we potentially move to a unified license. Yeah. Um, you know, that may see consolidation opportunities there. Yeah. Uh, lending has obviously been a segment we've been quite active in across Axis, cell and uh, more recently Adani Capital. Um, and there's certainly parts of, um, you know, I would say more specialty lending, yes. uh, whether it's affordable housing, SME, yeah. uh, that we think, you know, have really long runway for growth. Yes. Uh, and so really across that landscape, mm. um, you know, I think there'll be interesting opportunities. And, you know, these are businesses that need capital over time. So yes. I think it will continue to generate opportunities for private equity. All right. So these are uh, the key areas. Uh, David, uh, in your overview of the financial services sector globally and in India, the key trends and the potential you're picking and also fintech, uh, that's an area of potential plus concern. What's your view? Yeah, all these trends Pop talked about, these, it mirrors trends we're seeing globally. The whole financialization of, uh, of wealth um, with more and more consumers uh, coming into wealth and needing uh, places to manage it and invest their money. This is a, a global trend. Uh, insurance, as we see with aging demographics around, around the world, and again, a lot of assets to be managed. Uh, this is a really big uh, growth area. Um, we at, at Bain Capital have a business unit that is completely dedicated to making investments in the in insurance sector. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned, Nisha, uh, FinTech, which is a really exciting area. Again, a, a focus area for us. Um, we have a dedicated global vertical that invests in FinTech. We have a crypto mm -hmm. uh, fund that invests in some of the more emerging technologies. Mm -hmm. And here you're seeing the, conf the confluence of big advances in, in software and AI technology with um, the big financial payments infrastructure that's demanding a lot of change for efficiency purposes, for ease of use um, with consumers, for security concerns. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of people kind of think about fintech and, and crypto and they, and they think about some of the risks and issues, but these are actually some of the so really solid ways of managing security yes. issues to get people uh, confident in secure payments. Mm. And that, as we've seen in India with the UPI system, that's a huge, huge benefit to, mm. to economic growth. 
That's right. Uh, UPI has been a game changer in India. And like that, we are also building many other such digital uh, highways, yes. uh, which uh, which doesn't give any monopoly uh, to any player, right. and especially no, utilities. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, so probably infrastructure of the future. Uh, but uh, Pawan, uh, recently many private equity players have started talking about manufacturing. That has been a capital-intensive sector in requirement of uh, you know funds. But uh, private equity has steered clear of that. But you have made in the uh, in the past some investments there in Hero Motor Corp. What do you think about this space and what's been capital's view for manufacturing investments? Well, we're very bullish in manufacturing. Um, like you said, we've been investing in that space, obviously globally, but even in India now over you know, 14 years ago was our first investment. Mm. Um, you know, there's a lot of trends that support that. So clearly China plus one made in India, we've mm. talked about, um, you know, through Jam Bakshi, we've seen some of the investments in logistics that have yes. reduced the cost to manufacture in India. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot more capability and human capital development that's happening in India to support um, you know, more value-added uh, mm -hmm. manufacturing beyond assembly. I think the other piece that's fallen into place is really global interest to invest in scaling India. Mm -hmm. I think before it was very easy for companies to just say, you know, I have a base in China, I have a base in Southeast Asia, let me continue to scale that. I think what you've seen for a lot of the global reasons, they feel we have to scale India, we need an at scale alternative for our global supply chains. Mm. Um, and we're seeing that in a lot of the companies we look at where, you know, where initially you may not be the lowest cost. I think you have to get to global competitive cost, mm. but investing to scale manufacturing, you know, obviously Apple gets a lot of the headlines, which mm. is, um, you know, all the investments they've made in their supply chain. Um, you know, we have some portfolio companies that cater to Apple that, um, you know, mm. we're excited about uh, those prospects. So, you know, as we step back, I think, you know, manufacturing assembly and, you know, that spans both electronics, automotive, um, chemicals to a certain degree as well, uh, with, you know, even within pharma. Yes. Um, we think there's uh, going to be a tremendous growth and, mm. you know, those companies to scale will need capital. and. And, and that creates the opportunity for uh, private equity. All right, so that's an opportunity that you're ready to take here. And David, uh, talking about technology, and that has really propelled a lot of changes and many business opportunities. Now, from your point uh, of view, vantage point, so to yes. say, how do you see the technological shift, generative AI, and in fact, uh, AI has become a household name only in the last year. How do you see this momentum building? Well, it's an incredibly transformational set of technologies. Um, and we're looking at it from a couple of different perspectives. First is how it can help uh, uh, our business uh, directly using AI to, to analyze uh, data intensive issues, um, to ensure that we have the most efficient uh, operations. So it's, it's always good to start with uh, using it and, and really understanding uh, the impact. Uh, but then importantly, uh, across our, our portfolio companies, right. And we have a lot of software companies, and, and AI is really rev revolutionizing the mm. development process mm. uh, to develop code and software, right. and really changing the cost structure there. And so you right. need to be ahead of the so curve. So cost structure and business models, those yes. are going through a huge amount of disruption. Uh, but I want to ask you about the special situation opportunity that you see in sure. India, yes. and what are the requirements for India to attract more inflows from Bain? Right, so this is you know, an interesting area uh, of investment where you have rapid growth, but at the same time you have dislocation. And so you need these flexible forms of capital right. that may uh, allow a growth vision, but also provide some type of structured, structured return. Mm. And that fills a very important uh, space in, um, in the, where we see the development of, of India today. Right. And so we have an active special situations business which will make uh, mezzanine investments or uh, capital solutions to support um, uh, founders and entrepreneurs um, who are maybe not quite at the point where they're taking their yes. business uh, public, or they might have asset asset backed businesses. Um, also, real estate. You're seeing tremendous growth under supply uh, of real estate and special situations, real estate uh, oriented funds. You made a REIT investment, which is growing uh, right. pretty fast. Yes. Exactly to support this growth and and provide capital up and down. Uh, the structure to enable to enable this growth. 
All right. And uh, Pawan, final word to you and a quick one. Uh, if you have to choose one sector which has the highest potential in your view for being capital in India, which one will you pick? I know it's a tricky question, but a quick one. <laughs> I'll answer it differently. Um, you know, I think other than rather than picking a sector, maybe I'll pick what we call an archetype, which is platform plays. Mm. Um, you know, we think partnering great management talent with potentially starting starter, smaller starting bases, mm. um, you know, can create really great opportunities to build biz businesses. Yes. You know, I'll give you an example. In 2017, we started a data center platform. Uh, with really just a team and a, and a greenfield here in Mumbai. Yes. Today, it's the second largest data, plat data center platform in Asia. Um, and so, you know, that applies across industries, but I think that's an archetype we're very excited about. That's right. Uh, and that's where private equity can really play a very meaningful role in scaling up businesses, making it big and value creation, therefore. Uh, so on that uh, positive note, thank you so much, Pavan David, for Thanks, joining Nisha. us and sharing your thoughts on your investment strategy and the various themes that are really playing out. Thank you so much. Have a great year. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Big Deal. Thanks so much for tuning in.